My name is Amata and in this Red Gaming Tech video I am here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours but I also have a little bit of spice from the gaming world as well. So what do I have for you today? I have quite a few things from Apple for you today as there are reports surfacing that we will not be seeing a 5G capable iPhone until at least 2019 and we also have some interesting news about 5G specifically basically saying that the cost of 5G is definitely going to be an issue. We also have reports that Apple will be going to be announcing a new MacBook Air in Q2 2018 and on the gaming side we have a cool update coming to Slay the Spire and we also have a little bit of an update to that whole Diablo 3 Switch rumour that I discussed yesterday. But let's begin things with Apple. So this report is thanks to the investigations of the folks over at Fudzilla who have been working hard and swirling away and it basically said that they're fairly confident and have said with a quote high level of certainty that they think that Apple doesn't plan to have a iPhone with 5G capabilities in 2019. So obviously we have seen other companies making moves towards 5G technology including Qualcomm. They have been pretty open about the fact that they have signed various OEMs to launch 5G NR uh, sorry, phones in the first half of 2019. Of course we've seen Samsung making moves towards this as well. But Apple seem to be holding back for now according to this report. Now this does actually follow in sort of footsteps of their history as it were as they were also late to the party when it comes to 3G and 4G as well. So you might go okay what's Apple's game here? Well they're basically hoping that 2020 is going to be the year or 5G that basically we're going to be seeing this sort of first sort of wobbly steps into 5G in 2019 but it will really take off and really become popular and perhaps cheaper to produce and we'll get to that in a second in 2020. So basically they're going to skip the initial wave of 5G phones and went, probably announced a iPhone with 5G for 2020 if this report is correct. So this does mean of course they will be behind their competitors as I said um, Samsung, Xiaomi and OnePlus will all have a 5G phone ready in 2019. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see the S10 having 5G but obviously that's pure speculation. But they are definitely going to be behind, but that's not really going to stop them or hinder them really because, well, it's Apple. And it would definitely be interesting to see what happens, if anything, regarding the price of 5G, which we'll now get to. So this is all thanks to a report from DigiTimes, who are basically saying that the cost of a 5G smartphone is looking to be rather astronomical, to say the least. So all those first... 5G smartphones that I've just mentioned from Samsung and all that are going to come at a high premium if this report is correct. And the word is that an average 5G smartphone is going to cost $1,000. That's an average. So for companies such as Apple, who are of course rather notorious for having a high markup, you're looking at much more than that. Now, basically, according to Digitimes' sources within the smartphone supply chain, the cost of Qualcomm's X50 5G modem chips is 70% higher than the top tier modem chips for smartphones at the moment. So, obviously, Qualcomm and other people are hoping to bring down the cost of 5G chip solutions and the general production of them because they're well aware that the more expensive that this is it obviously raises the cost of the smartphone and just make, makes it so that less people can buy the phone and obviously makes it less profitable for them. Unfortunately though they do kind of have their hands tied as 5G chips have to be fabricated using 7nm or even 5nm so they don't really have a lot of wiggle room when it comes to where they can kind of cut corners as it were to try and reduce the price. Now obviously it's not exactly surprising that $1,000 is a bit much for a lot of people for a smartphone. Obviously a lot of people um, get their phone on contract so they won't just buy it outright they'll just pay for it over two years or whatever but even with that you're still paying off a lot for say the iPhone X which is almost a thousand dollars and it's just it's just too much for a lot of people for what is really not a lot of gain obviously people still do get it it does still sell I'm not saying it doesn't but it is obviously less affordable because that's an insane amount of money to spend on any one thing regardless of what it is so if we see an average 5G smartphone suddenly costing that much that could be pretty bad and may 
result in a sort of delay of the release of 5G smartphones because it would be too expensive for a lot of people to purchase but obviously we have seen the cost of smartphones that the top tier flagship ones increasing even the s9 which obviously is significantly cheaper than the iphone x is still pretty damn expensive so that's probably not going to put them off too much but they're obviously hoping to try and bring things down but they do have their hands tied unfortunately the caveats for 5g do not stop there as they're also expected to be heavier and more power consuming than 4G. And obviously it being heavier is not a huge deal unless it suddenly, you know, unless it suddenly weighs like 100 pounds or something that that obviously would be bad, but that's obviously being incredibly facetious and silly. But it being more power consuming is definitely a big downer because the battery life for smartphones has obviously been a point of contention. It is getting better, it's much better than it used to be, but it is still, you know, you need to charge your phone at the end of the day and sometimes even during the day if you're a heavy user of things like Snapchat or what have you so that would be a definite downer and that's obviously something they're aware of because less battery life is going to be a tick in the no column for a lot of people so we may see Apple be in the right on this one that they're going to wait till 2020 to bring out their 5G smartphones because by then perhaps things would have smoothed out somewhat the price is going to go down the cost of production is going to go down and they can charge a more reasonable price because you know again if an average smartphone is costing a thousand i shudder to think what apple would charge given their tendency for a huge markup with all that said however let's move on to our final apple topic which of course is regarding the macbook air now for those of you who keep your ear to the ground when it comes to all things mac will know that it has been quite some time since we have seen a new MacBook Air grace the store shelves. But a new report from Ming Chi Ku has surfaced. Now you might say, okay, who's that? Well, they're actually a renowned analyst from KGI Securities. And they have basically said that they believe we're going to be getting a new MacBook Air during the second quarter of 2018. Now, unfortunately, they did not have any pricing details for us, but the word affordable was stated. So what that actually means remain, remains to be seen because what Apple thinks is affordable is probably not what I would call affordable. So it's a quite a nebulous term as, as to what is affordable to one person. It's not affordable to the next, but it probably means it's not going to cost you both your kidneys. It just means it might cost you a single kidney. Now, they are also expecting the release of this new MacBook Air to help kind of revitalize MacBook shipments and show an increase of 10 to 15 percent this year. Now, unfortunately, the report is a bit light on the details. However, it does line up with a similar report we had from DigiTimes earlier on this year. I would not be surprised to see Apple do this because the MacBook market has remained rather stagnant and it's obviously a pretty damn popular choice for students, especially those who are in creative study fields like, say, for example, video production or graphic design or something, you know, something we're using like Premiere or Final Cut Pro or Photoshop, something like that. Mac is a pretty damn popular choice. In fact, fun fact for you fact fans out there, I actually did use a Mac a lot in college myself as I learned to edit on Final Cut Pro. That was my first editing suite. Just a little fun nugget fact about me, I suppose. Regardless, though, that's pretty much all there is to say. Obviously, we'll probably learn sooner rather than later as to what's going on here, whether or not this is true, as, of course, they are stating the second quarter of 2018 for the release of this thing. So if Apple are planning to do this, we'll most likely get release details coming up in the next few months. But of course, this all could be incorrect. It could be something Apple considered and decided, you know what, it's not worth the investment. Or it could be later on in the year or something else entirely. So let's move on to the final segments, which is something to do with gaming, as I said. And a little fun update to Slay the Spire. Well, go and watch my video on this if you haven't already seen it. I did do a look at on this. Now, this is an early access game, so obviously it has changed somewhat since I covered it, but, you know, the base game is still the same. It's not suddenly an FPS or something. So go check it out if you're at all interested. I personally would recommend the game. It's pretty damn cool. But basically, for those of you who don't know, which I highly doubt given how popular this game is on Twitch, but regardless, it is a deck-building roguelike game. And while it is a great game, the main mode, obviously... As with any game, just playing the same mode over and over, you start to get a little tired of it and you would like a bit of variety, but with the same mechanics, and they have added a new daily challenge mode. Now, this isn't going to be easy, but, you know, the main game isn't easy, so that's hardly surprising. However, the developers have called it, quote-unquote, super hard. 
So basically, it works the same way as a lot of daily challenges for roguelike games. You get the same seed as everyone else, and the same set of modifiers which are picked from a group of 15. Fortunately, no leaderboards or anything like that at the moment, but obviously they are working on that. That would be quite a cool feature. But this is going to be pretty damn cool, actually. This will kind of revitalise things somewhat and will be a way for those of you who are actually good at the game to challenge yourselves. Myself, I can barely win a normal run, so this is probably going to be Amy Screams in Frustration mode as well as Challenge mode. But let's finish things up with a little revisit to Diablo 3. Now yesterday I discussed how rumours were abound that Diablo 3 was going to be making its way to the Nintendo Switch. Now these rumours were set aflame by Blizzard themselves who tweeted a sort of nightlight of Diablo plugged in being switched off and then on again and obviously this set people's tongues wagging and everyone's like oh my god it's coming to the Nintendo Switch but Blizzard have kind of tempered the flame somewhat by making a statement to Polygon. And they've said, quote, we can assure you we're not that clever. It was meant to be a fun community engagement piece. We have nothing to announce. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that this game isn't coming to Switch. Perhaps it's coming later on. We have nothing to announce is usually code for we're not announcing this right now, but we'll announce it in our own due time. Maybe a BlizzCon, maybe before that. Personally, I think this would be a great fit for the Nintendo Switch. I think that would be really, really cool to see. But for the moment, Blizzard are playing it cool, no pun intended, and are saying that they're not that clever. But they, I think they knew what was going to happen. They're just not ready to announce it yet. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they somehow didn't realise the, the catalyst that they would set off. I don't know. Regardless of that, all my speculation, they've said for the moment that it's not coming to Switch, but... I personally think it will eventually, just maybe not yet. Of course, I could be wrong. I've not got my crystal ball as usual, so, you know, it's pure speculation on my part. I think it would be a good fit, though, and I wouldn't mind seeing Hearthstone come to the Switch either, given that it's on pretty much everything else that's mobile, so why not bring it to the Switch as well? Regardless of that, however, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.